We'll start off singing and we'll see how it goes. Step in my soprano. Let me see.
Today is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we should all be smiling this morning because we're celebrating his death and resurrection. He didn't do it for himself. He did it for us. And we should be happy about that. Just imagine where you would be without Jesus. We think we got it bad now. If there was no Jesus, where would we be? As we have service this morning, I pray that each and every one of you would take part in the service and not just be a spectator, but to lift up your voices, join in with the choir. Use your voice as a testament to the goodness of God. We all have something to be grateful for this morning. If the only thing you can think of to be grateful for is the fact that you woke up and got here this morning, that in itself is a reason to be grateful. If you have a sorrow, a burden, or a loss, an aching need for healing, hang it on the cross. If, you were, if your worry steals your sleep and makes you turn and toss, if your heart is heavy, hang it on the cross. Every obstacle of faith to or doubt you come across, every prayer unanswered, Hang it on the cross. For Christ has borne our burdens and dearly paid the cost to turn our trials to triumphs hanging on the cross. Let us pray. Okay, children. Thank you. Scripture and prayer will be brought to us by our youth this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Today I'll be reading Psalms 1 through 4. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stands in the house of the Lord in the courts of, of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself, and is real. Israel for his peculiar treasure. Good morning. Please bow your hands for a word of prayer. God, thank you for allowing us to be here this morning on this beautiful Easter Sunday. God, I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. God, thank you for allowing us to see another day. God, thank you for keeping us throughout the night and letting no hurt, harm, or danger come in our way. God, I thank you for giving us the ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to walk and be able to be here this morning. God, thank you for allowing us to be here. God, you know what everyone in this sanctuary needs, oh God. You know what everyone here is reaching out to, to you and what everyone needs. God, thank you for thank you for 
allowing us to be here this morning and praise to you god i ask that you give pastor a nice word for us this morning i ask that you allow everyone to be able to take in the word god thank you for allowing the youth to be here this morning and allowing us to sing in jesus name i pray amen Mighty God, you are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. This comes from Psalms chapter 68, verse 35. For ye are the temple of the living God. the 
temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Yeah. 
never gotten over getting saved. Getting saved. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Psalms chapter 98 verse 4. Son of God, and that by believing you, you may have life in his name. Chap chapter 20, verse 3.
Santa of the Women's History Month. So I'm going to stray away a little bit from Easter and talk about the women. Then we'll come back to Easter with the pastor. Okay. I was sitting at home, minding my own business. My phone rang and said, I need you to do something on the fifth Sunday for Easter. We gonna, I mean, for Women's Month. We're going to wrap it up with you. We do something every Sunday. We want you to do the end part. I said, what do you want me to do? She said, do what you do. I said, what do I do? So then uh, I said, I just leave that alone. So I went on and I thought about it. And about a day later, I looked in the bulletin and it said, it had an outline of all the Sundays. And then on the fifth Sunday, it had a dramatic presentation, Portia McComb. I said, what the heck is that? So, <laughs> so then I said, I need some help. So I went, I called on the person that could give me the help. So I called on Jesus. I said, I'm trying to do something for Women's Month, and I need a little help. I need a, little, a word from you. So all of a sudden, the word judges started coming to my mind. It stayed there. I said, judges? I said, what do they got to do with women? So then I uh, went back to him. I said, I got the word judges, but I can't put together with women. I said, I need a little more help. He said, I gave you the seed, you plant it, and you make it grow. So I said, did he get small with me? So, <laughs> so then, I, then I thought about it. I said, we as women, I'm talking most like church women, because I want to do it on church women. I said, we as women, we love to look good on the outside. We love to dress nice. And, and, and I'm trying to think of a topic. Well, I'll go back to the scripture I found first. The scripture said, Matthew 7 said, do, do not judge. Do not judge people. And then it's going to say, why are you judging others? People are judging you also. So then I said, what can I say? What topic can I do? I said, it's not by my outside. So I chose the topic, do not judge me from the outside. It's not the clothes that I wear. Right. So then I, then I went back in the day to the uh, like slavery time. The women that worked in the field, the same dress they wore to the field is the same dress they wore to the church because that's all they had. And it wasn't about their clothes. But through the years, you know how a man can make a rule. Man made rule of what a church woman should look like. So a church woman should always cover her head, have on a hat or either scarf, a nice outfit, some jewelry, not flashy, gloves, stockings, and shoes in a pocketbook. That's how a church woman should look like. I said, okay. So I'm gonna introduce you, I'm gonna introduce y'all to somebody right now. You know, we always got somebody in the church that in the church is, but not of the church. And what they do is walk around being negative, causing problems, and just, right, and just go against the, the, the um, goals and the mission of the church. So you're gonna hear me say busy about it. When I say busy about it, that's that lady I'm talking about, busy about it. So speaking of church ladies, here come one right now. Okay, so so Miss so Miss Busybody, start getting ready to start judging. What she do? She say she looks at her. Then Miss Busybody, she she didn't even speak. So I'm the other person. I said, did you speak to her? No, I didn't. I said, something wrong with that picture? Then she don't have to always be the first one to speak. Then Mr. Business about this, watch, I got her, watch. I know her like a, I know her like a book. So what she's going to do is come in. She's going to sit up to the front of the, she march to the front of the church and go to the th uh, third pew from the front and have a seat because she thinks her, her parents paid for that seat 25 years ago. <laughs> so, so then I said, 
the teacher said, then the preacher's preaching, and he's preaching on love thy neighbor. And he finished his sermon, heartfelt sermon, so the people, the choir's singing, and the people is shouting. So Miss Biz Miss Busy by so busy watching her, she said, Dog, how in the world she dress up every Sunday like that and come here and don't move? So she don't do nothing, just sit there. She thought might as well be at home. So then um, me, I, I said, you know what? Everybody don't praise God the same. You have people that sometimes quiet. But as long as God know their heart and, and you know his heart, you don't have to tear, you don't have to show people, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody. Right. That's, between, that's between you and your God. Right. So, okay. I said, that's it. I said, now, it's all right to be a quiet person, as long as you know how you feel about God. But on the other hand, you have this person. She'll jump the fence in a minute. So she didn't want the quiet praiser. Now here's a loud praiser. So she said, here she come, late, always late, loud and out of order. Amen. Amen. And I think she late because she stopped and pulled down the rainbow and put on all the clothes. So, <laughs> so then she did this, she did it on. Then she said, why she got that on? They tell me you come to the house of the Lord, you're supposed to wear your best. How do you know that's not her best? And it's not even by her clothes. Girl, I got my new outfit yesterday. <laughs> I said, it's not even by the clothes she wear. And I said, you all heard the thing that um, come as you are. We all heard that, come as you are. And we take it all kinds of ways. People take it differently. They, sit, they take it the way they want to take it. So, Girl, please. So, so, so then, um, so then I said, I'm gonna I'm throw this little part in there because this is gonna take me where I want to go. I said, Uncle Sam, slogan, I want a few good men. I want a few good men. But God's slogan is, I want all men. I want all men. And he said, I want their heart. I want their inside. And, and I said, you've quite seen sometimes from the inside out. Look, God love you from the inside out. So when Jesus was hanging on that cross and all that blood and all that pain, he didn't look around and say, I want you, I want you, I want you. He wanted us all. So he loved us all with the same. So when he was on that cross, he died for us because he loved us so. And because his grace and mercy is yeah. why we're standing here today. Yeah. So, so before you start judging, think about yourself and what you don't want people to say about you. Don't start throwing stones. Because right, yeah. once you throw a stone and start judging people from the outside, you better start doing that because those stones are coming right back to you. Because somebody judge you the same, they judge you the same way. So in closing, Miss Brown here will come to church every Sunday. And she prays God the way she prays God. Miss James comes to church. Might come to church ten times a year, five times a year. A one time a year, but that one time, she is on a mission. But you know, Miss Busybody don't give up. Miss Busybody, here she come. It's after Labor Day. She is wearing white. You know, she don't think about what might be going on with this person. So she come on in. She looking for help. She know where her help come from. So she go up there. She was ready 
to turn her life around. She really to be saved and be a different person. So that's why she was in the church. So then um, she said, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Because you don't have the right. Plus, you are not qualified. So when Jesus, so we said, instead of judging each other, let's hug each other. Amen. And Jesus, and we need to do like Jesus do. Jesus loves us all. He loves us from the inside out. He loves us from all his with all his heart. And that's how we should love each other from the inside out with all our heart. Thank you. Church, say amen. amen. Are we going to sing that or? Would you all please stand?
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall it be, world without end. Almighty God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for waking us up this morning, bringing us to this holy place on Resurrection Sunday morning. I ask the Lord that you put me behind the cross. Let your anointing and your Holy Spirit fall fresh on me. Into thy hands I commend my spirit unto thee. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer let the church say amen amen, amen. god is good in all the time amen amen it's wonderful to be with you on this resurrection sunday morning amen, amen. there is a word this morning from the lord and I would like to read three different passages of scripture. The first beginning with Genesis chapter 3. Verses 1 through 7. Now the serpent was cunning, was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings and also from the gospel of john chapter 1 and 11 chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 first and then chapter 11 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And from the gospel, same gospel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 20. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now, 
I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Amen. These are the words of our Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to teach and maybe preach later on. From the subject, the, the breath, breath of God. The, the breath, breath of God. In my preparation for this message, I listened to a priest online. I don't know his name. But he explains something about the name of God, Yahweh, that I thought was noteworthy and interesting enough to share it with you. He did it by explaining an amazing experience that he encountered at a seminar while pronouncing God's name. Yahweh. I tried it the way he experienced it, and it's true. What I learned from this priest is that the consonants, you know, the letters, used in spelling of the sacred name Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, no vowels in between, are in fact the only consonants that if correctly pronounced do not allow you to use your tongue or your lips. In fact, scholars teach that they know that the pronouncing of the sacred name was an attempt to imitate and replicate breath breathing. It was inhalation and exhalation. And so the leader of the seminar that he attended demonstrated it, how it works. And he began to do it in the microphone. Inhalation. Every breath, and in a few minutes, everyone in the auditorium were in tears. Scientists and scholars and PhD. It means wonder of wonders. And the first word that you ever spoke when you came out of your mother's womb was. The name of God. And the last word that you will ever speak before you die, you don't have to struggle. But the last word that you ever speak before you die is that last breath. The breath of God. 
God is life. And his breath is what we breathe to live. It is the one thing that we do constantly, daily, and throughout life. For the scripture says, for in him we move, we live, and we have our being. Acts 17 verse 28. We breathe his name. There are two points that I would teach this morning, which are the breath of God as creator breathing life into us. And the breath of God as resurrection, breathing life into us again. In both instances, God breathes life into us. In other words, the God who breathes life into humanity and the God who resurrects breathes into us again. The God who breathes life into humanity is the God who breathes the resurrection into us. And so to make sure that I was correct hearing the Holy Spirit and I call my dear friend uh, Dr. Noel Erskine who is the Professor of Systematic Theology at Emory University to make sure that I was con being consistent in my Christology, which is Christology is all the doctrines of our faith combined. And so I asked Dr. Erskine, is the God who creates the same God who resurrects and recreates. And he said, David, the God who breathed life into us at creation is the same God who breathes life into us again through the resurrection. Indeed, the breath of God is the source of life in the world, in this world, and in the world to come. Make no mistake about it. I'm going to explain something to you this morning. God breathed life into us in the beginning. And God gave us dominion and stewardship over a perfect world. We did not have to work. We did not get sick. And we did not die. Because death did not exist. But something happened. And everything changed. The breath of God gives us life. In fact, according to the second creation story in Genesis 2, there are two creation stories, one in Genesis, Genesis 2 and another creation story in Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28. But in the second creation story in Genesis 2, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And this is why when we die, our corrupt body goes back to the dust. But our soul, the breath of God, that lives forever and ever, goes back to God. God gets his breath back for judgment and accountability and to determine where in eternity we would live. It is the breath of God that gave life and will give us life again. 
Don't get it mixed up. There is no life with God in eternity without the breath of God. Which he gives us through the resurrection. And because your soul was given life by the breath of God, it will live somewhere in eternity. But unless the resurrection breathes the breath of God into you again, and you have been baptized with Christ, are y'all with me? You will not live uh, with him in eternity. You will live in eternity, but not with him. It is through the resurrection that God breathes his breath back into us again so that we can live with him in eternity. This is what the Apostle Paul meant in Romans 6. Look it up when you get home. I know I'm throwing a lot at you this morning, but it's Resurrection Sunday morning, and I need your mind. Amen. Come to church with your mind. Amen. We ain't entertaining no one today. Amen. And Paul meant in Romans 6 what he said, that we must be baptized and buried with Christ to rise with him in and through the resurrection. Do you get me? But how did we get so messed up and entangled into sin and move so far away from God? Did you ever wonder what would have happened to Adam and Eve if they had been able to shut the serpent up, refuse his manipulative suggestions, not listen to his rhetoric and remain obedient and, and faithful to God, well, they would have continued to live in a perfect world without sickness and pain and sin and death in the grave, and they would have remained created in, in uh, God's image and existed in a, in a perfect as perfect human beings. Adam and Eve were living in a living the life in a heavenly like paradise existence. But it all changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye because they messed it up. Amen. And when I say they messed it up, it was not Eve's fault. Because in the Hebrew, the word Adam, Adama, means all humanity, all humankind. So when God made Adam and made man, he made all people. You have a few questions right now. Pastor, are you suggesting that because Adam and Eve disobeyed and listened to Satan, that they made sin, sickness, and death become a part of our reality and our human existence. And that their disobedience corrupted the holy mind and spiritual nature that God breathed into us in the beginning. Pastor, are you saying that we had eternal life and that death and sin, sickness, and hate did not exist in the beginning because God did not create them? Yes, that is exactly what I am saying. God created us with free will. And we listened to Satan. And this is when sin and death appeared on the stage of human existence for the first time. It was because of our fellowship with a new friend in the hood. Better be careful of new friends in the hood. Especially those friends who discourage you from, from serving the Lord. Amen. In fact, in a lecture at Emory University, the late William Beale Mollert, the professor of Christian church history, stated that Adam and Eve, through the exercise of their free will, disobeyed God. And sin and corruption became a part of their and our human nature. And then sickness and death became an inescapable part of life itself. We all will die. This new nature was so unlike God's image that it gave Satan a permanent presence 
in our mind and in our spirit. Dr. Mallard maintains that, that this is the fall of you. This is what they call the fall of humanity and the creation of original sin. And this is why John says, for God so loved the world, but God sent his son Jesus to save us. And this is why John said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Indeed, God had to become human to restore our human nature from the corrupt and sinful nature. And through Christ, his death and resurrection, God recreates us in his image. In other words, God breathed the breath of life into us in the beginning to create us. And in the resurrection, God recreate us without corruption and restore us to our true nature. Amen. So Jesus had to come into this world and die on the cross and be placed in the grave so that he could defeat sin, take the sting out of death, and rob the grave of this victory and rise as a resurrected Lord and Savior so that he could take us into the dressing room of eternity and take off this corruption and put on incorruption, take off this mortal and put on immortality and take the sting out of death and rob the grave of this victory and then breathe back into us the life again so sickness and death we will be free of it all. And this is what Jesus tried to explain to Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, uh, when, uh, when they suggested that if he had been present, then Lazarus would not have died. Uh, but, but that she believed that, in the, uh, that he would rise in the resurrection. And Jesus said, let me get one, string, one thing straight. I am the resurrection and the life. Though he was dead, yet shall he live. In other words, I am the only love and word with the capacity to live within you and outside of time. But I am the breath of God that breathed life into you at creation. And I am the breath of God that breathes the resurrection for you to rise from the dead. Praise God. Dr. Noel Erskine is correct. The God who breathed life into us at creation is the same God who breathes God life into us again through the resurrection. The God who creates is the God who saves. The God who dies on the cross is the God who rises again. John 1 said, makes this point clear when it said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. God is life. Amen. I believe it was Paul Tillich, that German scholar who said that God is the ground of all being. In other words, nothing that lives can live without God. Nothing can exist in the world without God's breath. It's not Mother Nature. All the people be talking about the universe said this to me. There's only one God. Yeah. Finally, we need the breath of God to breathe on us and deliver us in this world. I went to bed last night and God breathed on me. Woke me up early this morning and gave me another day to praise his holy name and to fellowship with my sisters and my brothers 
on this Resurrection Sunday. I'm so glad that when I get tired and I can't go any further, God breathes on me and gives me his joy that the world can't take away. I'm so glad that when I was so poor that I didn't know how I would fund my education. But God step in and breathe his blessings on me and put my tuition on his bill. Gave me the resources to buy a split level house in an upper middle class neighborhood in Atlanta, Georgia without a J-O-B. And then God breathed his breath on me again and gave me the power to turn a house into a home. And then he breathed on my children and inspired them to walk with him and talk with him. I'm so glad that when people are spiritually dead, the breath of God breathes new life into them and recreate them and turn bad circumstances into opportunities. The breath of God is so powerful that it turns the dead people into living disciples and servants. So when you are doubting your worthiness and feeling dead, and insecurity and, and, and your heart is broken you need the breath of God to breathe on you when anxiety is on the rise stress is inescapable and life seems overwhelming and problems are closing in on you you need the breath of God when your faith is dead because fear is dominating your mind. Worry is permeating your spirit. And poverty has you trapped. You need God to breathe on you. And when you feel that you do not have the emotional strength, the spiritual stamina, and the will to fight a good fight, to finish the course, and keep the faith. Get on your knees and say, Lord, breathe on me. Oh, God is good. I'm so glad that one day when this life is over and I have gone the last mile of the way in this old body that has been reunited with the dust and the dirt on the earth, that God, my resurrected Lord, will breathe new life into me again. And I will rise on that great getting up morning. The breath of God will breathe on you. And I will look upon the face of the one true God, Yahweh, who knelt down and molded us from the clay. Isn't God all right? Isn't it all all right? Is he all right? Is it all right that he's creator? Is it all right that he's the resurrection? Is it all right that he's your salvation? Is it all right that when you can't go any further, that God can breathe on you? I don't know about you all, but I know the man. I know him for myself. I know him. He's been good to me. He's water when I'm thirsty. The doors of the church open.
the breath of God. Don't ever let the devil fool you. Don't ever think that God is not real. God is real right now moving in this place among his creation if you don't know Christ as your personal savior this is your opportunity to come do we have anyone who would like to come this morning give their life to Christ or if you want to come and become a part of this ministry, become a part of this fellowship, this is your opportunity to come. If you're on the phone, all you have to do is call in to the church. Either myself or one of the deacons will be willing to walk you through the steps of salvation. If you're on YouTube, you can just call Mount Gilead Baptist Church and we will definitely get back with you to pray with you and to counsel with you. Jawan Taylor to come up with me for a moment. I know we'll forget we were partners in Jerusalem, baptized, and I don't know how many people we baptized over there. Jawan, Reverend Jawan, and myself. This morning, maybe you want God to breathe on your life. Would you come to the altar? If you wish for God to breathe on your life this morning, maybe you need God to breathe new life into your situation. Come to the altar this morning. You can come right now. We're going to ask Reverend Jawan Taylor to give us the, the prayer this morning. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to restore strength into the man of God. We've heard a word of God that will change our life, not just for today, but forevermore. Every one of you, take this word home with you today. Let this word be a word that saturate your life. Let this word be a word that you'll be able to communicate to our God in heaven our Father, our Creator, our Savior, the one that died and took the bruises for us, the one that died and took every sin away. Lord God, we are free from sin, and we thank you, Lord, 
Lord, we thank you right now for every soul that is here in this building. We thank you, Lord, for every soul that didn't get to make it today. Someone didn't wake up. Someone didn't have the ability to make it into the house of God. But we thank you, Lord, for the time that you've given us now. And we thank you, Lord, for the feeling of fire in this building. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God that is true. Oh, God, we thank you right now. Lord God, you're not a man that you are alive. Lord God, you don't have to repent. But, Lord God, we thank you. There's a soul that's needing you today. There's a young person that's needing you more today. Someone's not going to commit suicide just because of the word they heard today. Somebody, the yoke is broken off of their body today. There's somebody whose marriage was on the end and on the edge of a breakup. But God, you came through with the word of God today. God, you are life giver. You are mind regulator. You are heart fixer. And Lord God, we're not going to deny your name. We're going to stand fast and be immovable in the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, that every soul here be a soul that's ready for the kingdom. Oh, yes, we're going to heal. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Oh, God, we thank you right now. We pray right now for the ones that are lost. We pray right now for the children, oh, God, that are not here. We pray for an influx. Lord God, every seat shall be filled in this house. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now for all you're doing for every one of us. In Jesus' name, can we all say amen? Amen. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give God some praise. Give God some praise one more time. Oh, what a powerful prayer by Reverend Jawan Taylor. We're going to continue to worship with the receiving of our offering now. We're going to ask the ushers to come. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and to give our gifts to you. May this offering be used for the building of your kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ushers will direct the congregation around.
All things come of thee. may be seated. I'd like to uh, welcome uh, all of you all here today and all the family members who are traveling from out of town and, with, and friends. We welcome all of you uh, to our worship experience. We're happy that you uh, thought enough of us to come and to worship our Lord on Resurrection Sunday with, with us here at Mount Gilead Baptist, Baptist Church. Church. Put your hands together for all family and friends and guests. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. I'd like to thank the Lord for our youth choir today. Amen. You all were awesome. And you are awesome. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We give God praise for Reverend Vanda Davis Covington. Amen. The musician for the youth choir and all the adults with the youth choir who support them and help them in the youth choir. Amen. We put your hands together for them. Amen. We thank God for Sam Fisher and Charles Chris, our other two musicians. Amen. Give God some praise for the media staff. Amen. And the ushers. Put your hands together for the ushers. And I must say, Portia always outdoes herself. Amen. That was wonderful. A wonderful dramatization of what happens in the church. Amen. And it's so real and funny because we know it's the real thing. <laughs> So give God some praise for, for Portia and Blondina and Linda James. Amen. And I like your outfit, uh, Sister uh, Linda. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Immediately after church, there's a fellowship downstairs. There's some breakfast, foods, and coffee and things like that. So you're all invited to partake into that fellowship. Amen. 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 We thank God for brother and sister clergy today for them. Amen. And did Reverend Tap do a marvelous job? I tell you. Amen. What a wonderful job. And, and all of the ministers did an excellent job with the seven last words. Amen. Every Wednesday night, because of their commitment and dedication, there was a word, amen. And this past week, Dr. William Spearman gave the last word. And we, we were certainly uh, grateful to him and to all of them for their commitment and dedication. Amen. I, I appreciate it so very much. Amen. Put your hands together for our ministers. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for all of you all who worked so hard uh, in this ministry, the deacons and the trustees. Uh, and also, I must still recognize people from Mount Gilead, Inc., because they work hard as well. And many of them have two or three different loads that they're trying to carry. But give God praise for all of them. Put your hands together for them. Amen. 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 Oh, we have a guest who would like to take him. Uh, would you like to say something? Oh, we, are, we, are, we welcome you, Pam's brother. Give us some praise. Amen. We thank you for coming to be a part of this worship service. Amen. Amen. I saw you sitting upstairs with uh, your brother-in-law. Amen. God is good. Amen. 
Now, if all hearts and minds are the same, amen, uh, Deacon Sue, you looking at me like something is going on, but you could please stand, and if she got something, she'll come up here and tell me, amen. Amen. Isn't the, God, isn't the Lord good? Amen. 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 I'm going to bless the food so when you go down there, you won't have to wait. There should be coffee and things like that as well. Amen. Uh, the young people should go first. Hey, get, put your hand together for the youth. <laughs> Amen. And the young ladies should go first. Then the guys after them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let, Let us pray. pray. Father, we thank you for who you are. For we cannot even breathe without you. Without your breath. We are nobody. But with your breath, we can live and move and have our being. And so we thank you, Lord. As we leave this place, help us to go out into the world and help others to receive the breath of God. In Jesus' name, amen.